Hi, we're Jack and Heather. We're busy professionals who wanted to escape the hustle and bustle of city life, so we bought a travel trailer. Since we both have regular 9 to 5 jobs, we're more like weekend warriors, spending the weekends camping and exploring with our fur kids, Spaz, Doodle, and Marley. We're both native Texans, so we started our adventures close to home with state and local parks and some small towns we've always wanted to visit. Click on the subscribe button so you can join us on our weekend adventures as we explore the Lone Star State. George Observatory and Challenger Learning Center here at the Brazos Bend State Park and uh, the facility is open on Saturdays on Saturday evenings they have uh, stargazing uh, there are tickets required for that um, but you can get up on the roof anytime uh, on when there's not anything going on um, the tickets are available through the Houston Museum of Natural Science, not through the uh, park. So you'll have to purchase those tickets online um, as well as your entrance to the park and everything. We are up on the roof of the George Observatory at Brazos Bend. And um, on Saturday nights, they have little star parties up here with uh, different telescopes that you can look through and everything. We did have tickets for tonight, but uh, it's supposed to rain, so they canceled it for tonight. But we will come back another Saturday and uh, get some video and share that with you. But anytime, there's no, uh, no gates, there's just the stairs. There's a ramp on one side of the building, and then there's stairs over here on this side of the building. So you can come up here anytime. If you have your own telescope, or if you just want to come check it out. So as you're walking to and from the George Observatory, you're going to see signs for the different planets at the observatory. They have the marking for the sun, and so you can see kind of like relative distance of each of the planets to the sun. I just want to say I appreciate that they included Pluto. I'm one of those kids that Pluto was always a planet. I don't know who decided that it wasn't anymore, but to me it still is. So, George Observatory, thank you for including Pluto. On your way to the campgrounds, you're going to pass this yellow and green building that is the Brazos Bend Nature Center. And there's some exhibits in here that are cool to see. Uh, the parking lot is also where you're going to park for the observatory and then there's a trail that you walk over to the observatory. But um, yeah, this is a pretty cool 
little nature center. Let's go check it out. Did you? Were they just color or are they different color? Same color. Wow. Might have been a seagull. I don't think you get any seagulls out here. Oh, there he is. They're so little. Yeah, so he's actually grown an inch and a half or two inches already. Um, <laughs> He was born August 19th. Oh, wow. I'm not saying he, we don't know. They look exactly the same. Yeah. Boys and girls look exactly the same. How will you know? There's only two ways to find out. Uh -huh. If you see one nine feet and bigger, uh -huh. that's a male because females don't get that big. Okay. The only other way to tell is to do an internal examination. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that they start out so small and they get so big. <laughs> Biggest one we've ever measured in a park is 13 feet 4 inches. Oh, wow. Huge. Yes. We used to have an outline on the floor, and I'm trying to get them to put it back because when you say 13 feet 4 inches, a lot of people don't have a concept of that. Yeah. What I do, like when I do an alligator presentation, I always have a tape measure with me. And then I'll say, I need a volunteer. Uh, and then I'll have somebody hold it and I'll say, okay, walk, 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 <laughs> walk. And then at 13 feet 4 yeah. inches, obviously I well, tell them to stop. And then they can actually get a real idea because kids don't understand what 13 yeah. feet 4 inches well, is. Well, I'm like, how tall are you? Six two. Yeah, put another one of you on top of you and, and it was longer than that. And then yeah, and <laughs> that's still not enough. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much. Thanks. Nature Center is this cistern that uh, was found and uh, it shows that likely there was a house here back in the 1800s or so. As you can see here, they used bricks to build it and it's mostly underground so it would collect water and this is how they would get water back then since there was no plumbing system. This area looks a lot better when we haven't just had a freeze in Texas and all of the plants are dead. This is a monarch way station. So monarchs migrate through Texas and this is a place where they can stop and get some food. There's usually milkweed and other nectar sources and water sources and stuff like that so that it's a, a place where monarchs can stop and rest on their way north or south. Brazos Bend does have some permanent structures for shelter that you can can rent and, and camp in. Uh, I believe you can also do tents. Yep, there's a tent right there. Uh, you can also set up a tent here as well. There's a nice selection of shelters here and uh, it's right next to the playground. And on the other side of that playground is another loop of RV sites. There's two RV loops and then the shelters.
Good morning from Brazos Bend State Park. Um, this park is about 45 minutes south of Houston, I guess, uh, towards the coast. And um, it's a beautiful weekend. I think there's supposed to be a little bit of rain this evening, but um, it's been a beautiful weekend so far. Uh, we are in Site 107. I don't know if that's gonna clear up or not, but um, we have really enjoyed this site. Uh, it's been, it was fairly level, um, well, pretty level. I think it was off by like half an inch, so we didn't even use any blocks. Um, and it's been, been a great site, so we've really enjoyed it. Uh, one of the things is, well, let me flip it around and I'll show you. So on the driver's side of our site, there is no uh, other camping sites for, I don't know, 100 yards or so, or maybe not that far. Um, there's just all this beautiful, nice, uh, forest here. So there's no, uh, nobody on that side. Um, you've got one over here and then one kind of right across and then there's some additional sites down, down that direction around the loop. Uh, again, we're in site 107. So we got our hookups over here, water and power. You got 30 and 50 there. Um, this site is a paved site, uh, asphalt site, and it is three, I would say three parking spaces, just because of these, um, I don't know what they're called, uh, <laughs> tire stops. <laughs> um, so there's three of those wide, so it makes it a little easier to, uh, to actually back in um, when you're coming into the site. Um, and it is, does have a very nice angle. It's not like some sites that have uh, like a 90 degree turn. So yeah, nice and level side to side. And then of course we got it level front to back. But yeah, this is a beautiful site. You can see we've got some neighbors right there. Um, so there's not a whole lot of privacy, quote unquote, uh, in between the um, the sites because there's it's just an open space, but um, you do have quite a bit of distance. You could put a tent out here if you wanted to. Got a picnic table there, a grill, and then the fire ring, which we made our first fire last night. Everywhere we've gone has been under a burn ban, so it was nice to actually have a fire last night. Um, one challenge putting up the fence is that the ground here was not level we've got it starts to curve up and so we kind of like did it a little janky to make sure that we didn't have any gaps at the bottom of the fence so but the dogs are loving it we got doodle spaz and marley all out this morning and we did see <laughs> a few armadillos last night marley uh wanted to try and meet one of them and that would not have gone well so uh but it was fun um watching the the night the nocturnal wildlife come out we've seen some deer as well and of course lots of birds so yeah it's a great site we really enjoyed it um and this is i'm trying to rem i don't remember the name of this loop there's two loops um i think it's the burr oak loop um because I, I got some video of the bathrooms earlier on this loop there's one one bathroom shower house that is at kind of the entrance to the loop so the farther you are away from the entrance the farther you are from from that bathroom and shower house so so yeah that's our site we've definitely enjoyed it and would we'll come back we've already kind of scoped out like what um sites we would uh prefer when we're coming back so so yeah lots of fun talk to you later we are at the Burr Oak Loop restrooms and showers. So I'm gonna take you in and give you a sneak peek. We got water fountains out here and a bottle filler, which is awesome. And women's restroom is right around here. Okay, I love this, love that. It tells me I need to pull and leave room for the door. So bathrooms are pretty nice. We've got four stalls here, including a handicap stall there at the end, baby changing station. Everything's very nice, very clean. And then shower is actually in a separate room. So we've got 
one here with a little exterior space and then the shower inside with a chair on the wall and then this here is gonna be another shower space with a door and it's got a built-in bench so I would say the doorway is probably not wide enough for this one to be handicap accessible, but the one over here with the curtain is. And then you've got a built-in bench out here as well. So there's two showers, one that has a curtain, and then one that has a door. Uh, this one has the built-in seat, or the seat on the wall that can fold down, and then this one has the built-in bench. So yeah, very... Well kept, nice and clean. One of the better ones I've seen that hasn't been brand new. And little secret access in the back. There's uh, paved trails going to each side of the loop. Uh, to, these come from the um, ADA sites. So the um, handicap accessible sites have a pathway that come to the bathrooms from those sites. So there's a couple over here and then there's a couple over here. If you haven't heard, a lot of the state parks now have these, they call them freedom chairs. They're an off-road uh, wheelchair that you can borrow from the state park and use it to explore the trails, which is really, really awesome. I love how the Texas state parks uh, are really thinking about accessibility.